So for this English department takeaway teaching, I'm just going to talk everyone through what I've been doing recently with Jekyll and Hyde in terms of guided reading for a high ability set. Now I start each lesson with a retrieval quiz from the previous lesson's activity, so just continually embedding what we were doing. Uh, the previous lesson we were looking at, uh, thrillingly, the June 2019 paper and the examiner's reports around that, and I thought it would be a useful thing for students to go over and there were a mixture of um, very binary, true or false answers, and some more subjective things at the bottom which gave them a range of selections they could pick out. Um, then I showed them the answers of this, and again just gave them some examples that they could engage in and think about, um, just some reminders about certain things, um, that you know, the examiner is not always necessarily saying this is the way you should do it, they're often saying you know, give the students some ownership and autonomy over those ideas, I found that really useful. It was good to think about the subject terminology and that the exam board is very worried about students getting bogged down and using too many pretentious technical terms, um, something I myself know a lot about. Okay, so, sorry for that real world interruption there. Um, and so, that's how we talk through those sort of things. Then, this is how I took the students through the guided reading. So, what I did is, as ever, I give them a lesson objective and some learning outcomes. I was keen that the objective should be really specific in relation to um, the novel and what actually happens to Henry Jekyll and there were two opportunities for them to do guided reading with the story of the door and the search for Mr Hyde. So what I then did is I gave them a particular extract of the reading to do, so about three to four pages of the book and then I pulled out some information about the two characters that we meet in this chapter and just to discuss a little bit about the multiple adjectives that are used here with Utterson and how the well-known man about town has lots of implications and inferences about the character of Enfield. Then I asked the students to look at these four quotations um, whilst they were reading. I didn't want them to write anything down, I just wanted them to think about it. Now because Jekyll and Hyde is all about um, de devolution and duality, I was really pleased with when we then discussed this, the ideas that the students pulled out saying that these ideas about Utterson showed that if he was friends with Jekyll it meant that Jekyll was going to be going the wrong way in life and that downgoing was itself a representation of devolution. Here the idea of the left hand being the left hand of Cain that's referenced very early in the novel, um, the fact that sinister is actually Latin for left and that Enfield, the man about town, this amazing phrase coming home from some place at the end of the world, not so much a location as a time. And again students made the connection with that and the idea of fin de siècle, the end of the cycle, the end of the world, the sort of Victorian anxiety about the upcoming 1900s. So we then did something very similar with the second chapter. So I was only asking them to read sections. I asked them to read out loud to each other so they could practice their reading, their literacy, and that was just a lovely thing to hear. And then I gave them on the right hand a cultural reference that they were probably unlikely to know, Damien and Pythias, and explained when or how they might need to use that in an exam. Again, I gave them some quotations to think about, which gave them some really interesting responses. And then I'd worked out the sequencing of the novel. So in the novel, Mr. Utterson meets Enfield first, then he meets a doctor called Lanyon, then he meets Mr. Hyde, and then he finally meets Henry Jekyll. And I asked students while they were thinking to talk about and think about why does Stevenson sequence these meetings in this order. So I then modelled for them what I'd thought about it, that... Enfield represents the kind of bad elements of society that Jekyll's interested in, that Lanyon is a scientist, and if you kind of add those two things together, you get Mr Hyde and devolution. And actually then another student came up with the theory, which I was very jealous of, that it was sort of like a series of Russian dolls, that all of these things, um, bad behaviour in society, science, and Hyde himself are all inside Jekyll, like a sequence of Russian dolls. And I thought that was really interesting ideas, so I think it led to good things, and then I gave them a couple of other quotations from that chapter where it looked to me like Mr Hyde is appearing absolutely everywhere and therefore I asked the students to think about is this coincidence and am I reading too much into this and we talked a little bit about the meaning of what writers do and again this was really relevant to the novel because Stevenson wrote the novel in three days, a sort of kind of fever dream so obviously when you're writing in that terms you're going to be repeating yourself, you're going to be rewriting the images again and again and again so, um, back to you subject leads at this point. So that is how I'd imagine a takeaway teaching video working in a departmental meeting where you have a member of staff who's been chosen to start the session and they might go through something like this in this sort of detail. This was an entire lesson 
the whole thing took an hour because of the depth of reading and discussion that we got into because I'd framed it for the students, they might just want to share a really good effective do now strategy or again just something that's worked with particular groups of students. But again, if we can do this, and again, if ideally it's being videoed and recorded and saved, we can build a really exceptional library of professional practice. Okay, thank you everyone, and I hope the departmental meetings on Monday go really well.